know everyone always says their marriage didn't start out this bad, but I promise you in my case, it's completely true. I met my husband when I was in my early 20s, and we immediately fell in love. Our relationship moved quickly after that, and it wasn't long before we got married and settled down. I never saw any worrying signs. Everything was so normal and cliche. We had the house with the white picket fence. My husband was a lawyer and made a very steady income. There weren't any problems at all back then. A few years into our marriage, we had a son, and that only made things better. He was our pride and joy, and the three of us all got along great. Again, we were just a normal, happy family. Then everything started to change. Over the years, my husband became different. He started acting controlling and angry all the time. There were very few days where he didn't yell at me or our son, and he never used to yell before. I don't know what happened. He just went completely psycho somehow. It wasn't just his behavior either. He started shaving his head and face to make himself completely bald. It happened out of the blue too. One day he had a full head of hair and a beard, and the next day he was totally hairless. I didn't know what had gotten into him. At first, I just thought it was some bizarre midlife crisis and he would eventually snap out of it, but he just kept getting worse. He acted like a lunatic more and more each day. I never knew what was going to happen next with him. One minute he would be calm and then the next minute he'd be flying off the handle or acting so immature that I would almost forget that he was in his 40s. My son and I actually became scared of him. After it had been going on for a while, I began to want a divorce. He just wasn't the man that I'd married anymore. The problem was that I was too scared to tell him because I thought he would snap. If even little things could make him go into a rage, then I didn't want to find out what asking for a divorce would do. Still. I don't think that you could really say that we were married by that point. I avoided him as much as possible, and barely even spoke to him unless I had to. I even started sleeping in my son's room so that I wouldn't have to share a bed with the freak. Plus, I was afraid that my husband might hurt our son when he was on one of his rampages. Living with him made every day a nightmare. Not only was he angry and unreasonable, but he was also just creepy as hell. The way he shaved his head made him look like a different person, and he was always passive-aggressive in the most horrifying way. Sometimes he would come out of nowhere and start petting me or my son's head. Then he would say things like, I'm not gonna hurt you. I wouldn't do that. Then he would smile like a creep afterwards and stare at us until we were able to get away. It was the most uncomfortable and disturbing thing ever. Every once in a while, I would actually lose it myself around him. I would tell him to screw off and leave us alone. Or I would just take our son and leave for the day without telling him. I didn't do it too often though, because whenever I did, my husband would snap and throw a huge fit that I would have to deal with later. He really had gone completely haywire. Then one night, I finally decided that I'd had enough. It was extremely late, and my son and I had to be up early the next day for work and school. We were both sound asleep when we were suddenly awakened by incredibly loud noises coming from downstairs. We could hear my husband laughing like a maniac and banging a bunch of stuff around. At first, I was just going to ignore it like I'd been ignoring everything else that my husband did. But then I decided that it couldn't go on anymore. I was so tired of him ruining everything. I got out of bed and headed downstairs to confront my husband. My son followed behind me. When we got downstairs, we found my husband standing in the dining room, banging on the table and laughing like a psycho. He had obviously completely lost his mind. What the hell are you doing? It's the middle of the night! He stopped what he was doing and turned around as I yelled at him. I noticed then that he had some hair growing out of his head again. It was really messy and made him look even more psychotic. I thought for a second that he was going to start screaming, but he just stood there quietly and stared at us. I didn't know what was going on in his mind, but the silence was even more scary than him yelling. As he continued to stare at us creepily, I slowly started backing away towards my son. What are you... Then, out of nowhere, he suddenly pulled out a knife and lunged at us. <laughs> 911, what's your emergency? I think you better come over and clean up my family's mess. What's the problem, sir? Did you or somebody else do something to them? I'm not gonna hurt them. 
I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> All right. Hello? This story was inspired by a man named Alex Murdoch, who appeared to have a shaved head in a prison jumpsuit in his booking mug shop. The man was notorious on the internet for looking exactly like the famous Mr. Clean, but more notable for his heinous actions. On June 7th of 2021, Alex was accused of taking out his family. He was a disgraced lawyer gone mad and was sentenced to two consecutive life terms in prison and sent to one of the state's maximum security prisons. During the court here, Alex would repeatedly say something along the lines of, I would never hurt them, over and over again. The judge said it was sad to see the defendant go from a lawyer who had practiced before him to a grieving father to a murderer. Hey, what's up? Is something wrong? Yeah, I'm at the address, but something's not right. This client lives in the middle of nowhere. Don't worry, you'll be compensated for the gas, and I'll make sure you get paid overtime for working late. Normally, I wouldn't accept a job like this, but it was described as a cleaning emergency, so I think I could get a big fee out of the guy. Who's the guy? Some older rich dude, by the sounds of it, lives alone. He said he wouldn't be home, though. There should be a key under the doormat. Don't overthink it, alright? Just clean up and go home. Well, alright. I'll text you when I'm done. Sounds good. I'll see you tomorrow. What the hell is this place? I better not have to clean this whole place by myself. This is ridiculous. Of course, I drove all the way out here for nothing. Thanks a lot, boss. Might as well see if anyone's home. <sighs> Jesus! You scared me! Are, are you the owner of the house? That's me. Come inside. Uh, uh oh, okay. I was told you wouldn't be home. There's no time for chit-chat. You should really get started. I recommend starting with the washrooms. The toilet got clogged right before you came. Uh, sure, sir. Follow me. Whoa, it's, uh... It looks, look, it looks like a lot of work. Well then, get started! I'm paying you by the hour! All right, all right. Oh, God. Scrub faster! I thought you were good at this! I just got started. Give me a, <laughs> a, a break. Well, hurry up. If this isn't done by tonight, you people aren't getting a dime. <laughs> You're done with the toilet. Now, unclog the sink. I always have my date shave everything in here before they get into my bed. <laughs> now drain it. Okay, sir. That's it. Get in there, nice and deep, all the way. You worthless rookie! Clean this shit up before I bleach your insides! Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll clean it up, I swear. Forget it! I'll do it myself, since you can't even do your own job. Just go upstairs and clean the washroom. Uh, okay. Upstairs to the far right. <laughs> what am I paying these people for? Can't even clean a toilet properly. Nobody wants to work anymore these days. Please. 
please let this be cleaner than the last one. Get out! Ah! Does that look like a lot of work to you? Who, who are you? I'm Mr. Clean. And it's time for my bathroom to shine! <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from me! <laughs> This story was inspired by a horrific case revolving around a man who was found guilty of the slaying of a missing Winnipeg cleaner and has been sentenced to 16 years in prison. The suspect's name is Kyle Pietz, and the victim's name was Eduardo Balaquit. It was alleged that Pietz planned to rob Balaquit while the night cleaner was working alone and later disposed of his remains. Police were unable to determine the cause of his untimely demise. Pietz's lawyers asked for a sentence of 8 to 10 years, arguing that without a cause of death, the Crown is relied on circumstantial evidence. The Crown asked for a sentence of 18 years. When I was a kid, I used to dream about living in a big fancy mansion with all of my friends. I figured that I would get a great job straight out of college and immediately make a lot of money and be successful. I guess my life turned out a lot differently than I imagined. I didn't end up having a big fancy mansion with all of my friends. No, I lived alone in a tiny apartment in a shitty neighborhood out in the not so good part of town. I didn't have a great job either, though I suppose you could say I was successful. I worked full time out on the streets as a dealer selling to crackheads. I honestly don't fully remember exactly how I'd gotten into that business, but I've been doing it for years, and I built a pretty solid reputation for myself. Everyone in that neighborhood knew where to go if they needed any product. I usually worked on the streets in various locations where I could make deals without being seen. People knew where to find me, and if they didn't, then they had ways to get in contact with me. I hardly ever worked near my apartment though. I always liked to keep my business away from my home since my customers weren't exactly the kind of people that I wanted knowing where I lived. But sometimes my customers would come to my apartment if I didn't have any other way of meeting them. This especially happened with this one guy. The guy was a total crackhead. He had to have been hooked on the product for years. The guy was pretty weird too. I called him Mr. Clean because he was bald and always wore the same white clothes, so he looked exactly like the mascot. The name was rather ironic though, because the guy was actually pretty far from clean. He was totally disgusting. If a roach was ever a person, then it would be him. Mr. Clean came to my apartment often to buy product. I had tried to get him to meet on the street before, but he always refused. He seemed to think that it was too dangerous. I didn't really complain too much since he was a regular customer. The guy was really demanding though. He would always want me to meet on his timetable, and he never cared if I had something else going on when he contacted me. He would just keep texting and calling me over and over until I responded. Obviously, he couldn't go very long without having product. He was a fiend. One night, I had two friends over to hang out. We were just having some beers and enjoying an NBA game, a typical guy's night. The game had only just started when I got a text from Mr. Clean. I knew that he was probably wanting to buy more product, but I ignored it as I just wanted to enjoy my time with the guys. As the night carried on, I kept getting harassed by texts from Mr. Clean. He started sending me one practically every minute. It got to be annoying as hell, but I continued to ignore them. It wasn't often that I had a night off and I didn't want to worry about working right then. But then the text turned into calls. When I didn't pick up the first time, he just kept spamming me over and over again. I finally decided that I couldn't ignore him any longer, and I excused myself to go to the washroom. When I got inside, I answered the phone. 
really pissed at the crackhead for bothering me so much. What the hell do you want, Mr. Clean? I want some candy from my favorite candy shop. <laughs> Just as I expected, Mr. Clean told me that he wanted to buy some product right away. I told him that I wasn't working that night and that he should come by tomorrow, but he kept insisting. I told him no several more times, but it didn't do any good. He even said that he would pay me double and literally begged me to sell it to him that night. I finally folded and agreed to let him come over. Mr. Clean said that he would be there in 10 minutes, so I headed back out and told my friends. We continued watching the game until he arrived. <laughs> When he came inside, it was awkward as hell. My friends weren't used to being around crackheads, so they were really uncomfortable. And this was probably the worst guy for them to be around. He smelled like shit, and he looked deranged. I was used to being around him, but he looked even creepier than usual. I tried to get through the business as quickly as possible, but when I asked Mr. Clean for the money, he didn't give it to me right away. Instead, he just stood there and gave me this strange look. Come on, what are you doing? Then, Mr. Clean lifted his shirt to reveal a firearm on his waist. Give me everything you have, right now, before I bleed your heads down! My friends and I were scared shitless. We slowly lifted our hands up as the crackhead glared at us, still showing the firearm. I said now! I felt frozen in place as I stared at him. I couldn't wrap my head around what was happening. Then, to my horror, I watched as the guy reached towards his waist. That's when I grabbed a knife from my back pocket and immediately charged at him. Ah! The next thing I knew, my friends and I were being taken into custody. Mr. Clean was put in an ambulance and taken to the hospital. I never found out what happened to him after that. Later on, my friends and I were charged with possession of narcotics, but all the other charges were dropped since it was labeled self-defense. After that day, I'm a lot more careful with the clients I take on and I never let any of them come into my apartment anymore. The whole ordeal traumatized me, but I'm glad that I was able to get him first. This story was inspired by a disturbing incident regarding a man named Michael Freshwater. Here's an image of him below. The man had an insanely similar resemblance to the Mr. Clean character. It was alleged that Freshwater had stormed into a flat with a firearm to rob three drug dealers. One of the dealers took matters into his own hands and defended himself using a knife. Freshwater was later found unresponsive. The trio were then arrested, but never charged for the crime since they concluded that it was an act of self-defense. Despite not being convicted, the three men were slapped with other narcotic charges. It was mentioned that Freshwater was a regular user who intended to rob the men in the flat that night. 